This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, hello there, hello there. It's Jessica Dubbing. Welcome you to another sports catastrophe on this day. And on this day, April 23rd, almost 60 years ago, well, 59 years ago, the New York Mets finally, finally won a game in their maiden season. Defeating the Pittsburgh Pirates 9-1. The Mets were basically the brainchild of a failed league. Follow me on this. Now, as people should know, Brooklyn and the Brooklyn Dodgers and the New York Giants were both based in New York, but they both decided to move in 1958. The Dodgers move was basically because of some internal strife and the fact that one of New York State's highest control controllers, Robert Moses, refused to let the Dodgers have their new geocidic dome stadium at a certain point in Brooklyn. Basically, he wanted to put a stadium where he would control things, where the Mets played, Flushing, and all that. We're not the New York Dodgers, we're the Brooklyn Dodgers. So basically, O'Malley was not too happy with things and all that. And basically, he went for greener pastures in Los Angeles. At the same time, the New York Giants were in for a troublesome time. I mean, mostly because the polo grounds was kind of getting decrepit and all that. So the New York Giants basically decided to move out west. They they almost went to Minneapolis, where their minor league affiliate was, but basically they decided to settle on San Francisco, mostly because O'Malley needed a partner. So basically, the L.A. and San Francisco Cities would get those teams. And the best part about it is that with with airplane travel now better than ever in the 1950s, the teams could actually fly to California, play the Dodgers and Giants in several games, like all at once, and then basically just fly back without having to fly to and from California every time. Unfortunately, the state of New York cried foul. They still have the Yankees, but, I mean, the Yankees were hated. So basically, Brent Rickey, decided to have the Continental League, a co competitor to the American and National Leagues, if you will. So basically, the plan was to put teams in many cities. Canada was about to get a couple. Toronto and Vancouver were trying for what? Trying for some. Montreal wasn't in the discussion. However, because the threat was real, baseball decided to basically play, chick play chicken first and said that they would add two expansion teams to the American League in 1961 and two to the National League in 1962. And the New York Mets were one of them, basically putting one in New York State, the second team there. So anyway, so the National League returned to New York City for the first time in five years. The Mets were terrible that year, 40 and 120, or a 250 percentage. Basically, for every four games they played, the Mets only won one of them. They ended up last in actually 16 and a half games behind the San Francisco Giants. The Mets were the last team to be 60 plus games behind in a division until the 2018 Orioles finished 61 games back of the Boston Red Sox. And of course, it would be hard these days because you know you have five teams in a division, five or six. The Mets' 120 losses are the most in the modern baseball history. Now, people count the 1899 Cleveland Spiders with their 20 wins, 134 losses thing as the worst because of the fact that, you know, this was not when the major league, this was still when baseball was still around, but the American and National Leagues were not set in stone. The closest to the Mets' 120 losses were the 2003 Detroit Tigers who missed by one game of a tie that mark with 119 losses and the 2018 Orioles with 115 losses. The Mets starting pitchers only won 23 games out of 40. So the bullpen was just as effective. The team would lose their first game against the St. Louis Cardinals on April 11th. 11 to 4, and went on to lose their first nine games. So basically, this was the day that the Mets finally won a game. 
They were actually 12 and 19 at one point, which wasn't that bad. Then they went on a 17 game losing streak. That's amazing. They also had an 11 game and a 13 game losing streak as well. The old professor, Casey Stangle, was the manager of the Mets. A couple years after the Yankees let him go because of some questionable moves, including only putting one in Ford out for two of the seven Yankee games in, game, in the World Series against the Pirates instead of three. They would end up having to play their polling games at the Polo Grounds, which didn't get much better as a ballpark. It was just temporary until Shea Stadium was built. They were infamous for their epitude and one of the worst teams ever. I mean, their batting average sucked, their ERA sucked, and their fielding percentage sucks. Fans actually came out in droves. They had the sixth best National League um, attendance out of the ten teams. All that... So basically, in the offseason, the Mets were huge. They got Paul Blair as an amateur free agent. Sadly, though, Blair would basically be a better hitter for the Baltimore Orioles. The Mets purchased Billy Blows, who was a decent pitcher. The Mets traded a player to be named later to Milwaukee for Frank Thomas. Not that Frank Thomas, a parrot in the 50s named Frank Thomas. And the Mets sent Gus Bell to the Braves. May 21st, 1962. To complete the trade. A version of the Mets would give up Billy Lowe's back to San Francisco. And it bit them in the butt. As I believe Lowe's had a good season. 62 season for the Giants. So they would pick up some people in the expansion draft. Gus Bell. Ilio Chasson. Joe Christopher. Chuchu Coleman. Roger Craig. Um, Gil Hodges, Jim Hickman, both, like, veterans. Gil Hodges was, was allowed to be picking the expansion draft? Wow. That's huge. Jay Hook, Felix Mantilla, another good star, and Don Simmer. Yes, that Don Simmer. So the Mets were 41-20. Their first game was at old St. Louis Bush Stadium, not the Bush Stadium with the carpet and, you know, from the 1980s. Sportsman Park slash Bush Stadium. That's a change to the name once the St. Louis Browns left St. Louis. Anyway, the Mets lost 11 to 4. Gil Hodges and Charlie Neal homered for the Mets. Their home opener would actually be a couple days later. So the opening day lineup was Richie Ashburn at center field. Wow. They had Richie Ashburn. Felix Mantella at short. Charlie Neal at second base. Frank Thomas in left field. Gus Bell in right. Gil Hodges at first. Don Simmer at third. Hobie Landriff at catcher. And Roger Craig the pitcher. The Mets would suck. But the weird thing is they actually did good against the Chicago Cubs. I kid you not. If you look at the records, the Mets actually were 9-9 nine and nine against the Cubs in their 18 games, which is amazing. It's like, what? How the hell did they do that? But yeah, that was weird. And the Cubs and the Cubs ended up with 59 wins that year. Anyway. Also funny to see. Yeah, so Harry Cheedy was purchased by the Mets from the Cleveland Indians to be catcher. And then basically was traded, was sent back to Cleveland in June of 62. Don Simmer would end up being traded by the Mets to Cincy for a couple of players. The Mets got Finnegar Bend Meisel, who was a decent pitcher in his day. Mark Formberry went from Baltimore to the Mets, and he was a star for the Mets in the early days. The Mets sold Hobie Landruff to Baltimore. A Crapel was made after free agent by the Mets. So, yeah, so they had some pretty tough, pretty weird teams. You know, their, their main catcher was Chris Canisaro. Mark Fornbury at first, Charlie Neal second, Felix Mantella at third, Ilya Shakalan at short, Frank Thomas in left, Jim Hickman in center, and Joe Crisper in right. Like, they still had the great Richie Ashburn and Gil Hodges, who actually hit nine home runs in 54 games. That's pretty good. They had done something for a while, but they got rid of him. Basically, no, no Met pitcher except for Ken McKenzie 
actually had a winning record. So yeah, that wasn't so bad. But the Mets deserved better. It took the Mets a while. It actually took them seven years to actually become manageable and not get in last place in the National League. And Shockley in 69, thanks to their ineptness, they got good draft picks and all that. And basically, they had a fantastic lineup in 69 that shocked the Baltimore Orioles and got them the World Series. Just seven years after existing. Pretty good, don't you think? Anyway, the Mets have been have not won a world have won one World Series since in eighty six, but the, they've been to a few other finals but haven't gotten the brass ring. Let's see what that entails. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond, I do.